moving to Edmonton is such an amazing experience for so many people right now. But if you move to the wrong area in the city, then it is going to ruin your whole experience and you are better off staying where you're at. Now, guys, I think moving to a new city is a cheat code. I think you get to create new experiences, push past your comfort zone, meet new people and pursue new opportunities. But if you move to the wrong area in the city, that's not a great fit for you or your family, then you're going to have a negative experience. You're going to blame that on moving to the city as a whole. You might end up moving back to where you came from or starting the cycle somewhere new when you had the right city and you just didn't pick the right area. So for all of you who are going to be moving to Edmonton, I wanted to give you a top down view. We're going to be jumping into the map today and showing you the different areas in Edmonton to make sure you don't make that same mistake. We're going to give you every different area of the city. We're going to give you some of the suburbs, what the amenities look like so that you can make that right decision when you move to Edmonton. Now let's go get right into it. guys here we are in google maps again we are going to be going over a top down view of edmonton to make sure that you are familiar with the layout of the city and that you can choose the right area to move to when you're moving here to edmonton now we are going to start with stuff that is a little bit exterior to edmonton and then work our way into the city so we're going to start with some of the suburbs around the city here now when i say suburb some people get really picky with the definition what we're talking about is the large cities that are in the metropolitan area of edmonton in the surrounding area there now Two of the more popular and more common ones that we're going to see here. To the northwest of Edmonton, we've got St. Albert. And then to the east of Edmonton, we have Sherwood Park. Now, those are the two largest cities in the surrounding area of Edmonton. They're both sitting at around 70 to 75,000 in terms of population. Because of that, they are pretty well built cities in their own right. They both got robust public transit. They've got great amenities with shopping and restaurants, all the stuff you could need. They both have their own hospitals. So really, you can live in these cities. You can see that really both of them are right outside the Anthony Hende, which is our ring road that goes around the city here. And so you're very close to everything that Edmonton offers. But these are the two cities where you can really live in and feel like you don't have to come into Edmonton at all. And that makes them a very popular choice for people who are moving to Edmonton. Now, if I had to differentiate between the two of them, the two things that I hear the most often... Short Park, you're going to have a little more uh, on the amenity side in terms of shopping. There's more malls. There's a great art and cultural scene in Sherwood Park. They've got lots of events going on that you might not have the same level of in St. Albert. And then St. Albert, I would say, is a little bit heavier on maybe the nature side. You can see that there's a river, the Sturgeon River, that cuts through the middle of St. Albert there. And that's going to have a lot of River Valley walking trails. They've got lots of ravines and tons of park in St. Albert. Again, not that one doesn't have what the other has, but that's a little bit of a way to differentiate between the two of them. The other way that a lot of people are making the difference between Sherwood Park and St. Albert is the property taxes in St. Albert are actually a little bit higher than we have here in Edmonton at about 1.1% of the property's value annually. And in Sherwood Park, those are going to be lower at about 70 or 0.75% of the property value annually in property taxes. So Sherwood Park, that home is going to get you just a little bit more affordable on the property tax side. Now, a few of the other suburbs that I wanted to cover here in Edmonton, one of the other big ones is going to be Spruce Grove. Now, again, not quite as big as St. Albert and Sherwood Parks. So you're not going to have the same level of amenities in terms of malls and shopping and hospitals, all that kind of stuff, but is also a great option. You can see that Stony Plain just to the west of here is another option a little bit smaller than Stony Plain. Now, these ones are 30 to maybe 45 minutes away from Edmonton. So if you do feel like you're coming to commute to Edmonton all the time, or you're going to be in the city frequently, this is an option where maybe you might feel like you're commuting more often than you'd like to or for longer. Uh, but if you do like that, to have the option where you're outside of the city, you feel like you're in your own city outside of Edmonton, it's not quite as large, you do get a little bit more of an exclusive community then that's going to be an option that a lot of people do like to kind of get out and be in more of the small town feel. Now you see that between Spruce Grove and Edmonton, there is one here called Atchison. That's actually going to be largely industrial. We don't have any homes there in Atchison. So that's not a place that people are moving to. Now, a couple more that we are going to mention here on the South side of Edmonton, just South here, we're going to have Beaumont and Leduc. Nisku is kind of the same situation as Atchison, where that's going to be largely industrial. Now, Beaumont and Leduc are both very popular options, especially for people who want easy access to the airport. Now, the airport 
is going to be just here outside of NISQ. So you can see that that's going to be super easy access. So a lot of people who need to travel frequently, whether that's up north to go work on the oil fields or anywhere else that you're going to be traveling frequently, Beaumont and Leduc are a super easy way to live there and then to be able to get to the airport as frequently as you need to. You can see that if you're up here in St. Albert or Sherwood Park, that's going to be a little bit more of a trek. Now, Beaumont, it does look like it's a ways from the city. It's a little bit deceiving. This road here, and that's going to be 50th Street. From really the southern edge of Edmonton to the northern tip of Beaumont, that's only going to be about five minute drive. So this is a great option where you might not have the same level of amenities. It is a smaller city. But if you do need to get into Edmonton for whatever reason, you don't feel like you're very far away. It's just a hop, skip and a jump here. Leduc, obviously, you can see that you're a little bit farther away. But one of the benefits that Leduc has, you're sitting on the Highway 2 here. Now, this is the Queen Elizabeth 2. This is actually going to take you down to Red Deer, Calgary. If you're heading to Banff, this is the more popular option to go down this way and then cut west in Calgary on the Trans-Canada Highway. As well as if you're heading down to the States, the border is down that way as well, or even Southern Alberta with Waterton and then uh, Drumheller as well. That, so this is a very common road that you're going to be taking if you're heading anywhere Southern Alberta or again, down out to the States. Now, inside Edmonton, it does get a little bit confusing. This is Gateway Boulevard if you're going north, and then Calgary Trail if you're going south. Lots of retail along this path, too. So this is a very common road for people to want to be close to or to be able to use frequently. Now, Leduc and Beaumont both have options for older homes and newer homes as well. There's a lot of development going on in each of these areas. And so it's something that a lot of people can be attracted to because there is quite a variety of homes to be found in both. They both have your everyday shopping needs in terms of restaurants, uh, all of your pharmacies, as well as grocery stores. It's going to have all that kind of stuff. It might be lacking on more of the specific retail that you might be looking for. They don't have robust malls in really either places. So if you're looking for anything that's going to be outside of your day-to-day, -day, then you might have to head into the city from each of these. Now, the last one that I'm going to mention is going to be up here, and that's on the Northeast. This is Fort Saskatchewan. This is another one of the smaller cities in the Edmonton metro area, going to be similar size to Beaumont. You can see that the North Saskatchewan River that's running through the center of Edmonton also comes across kind of the north and west side of Fort Saskatchewan. And so again, you're going to have lots of nature pretty much at your fingertips here in Fort Saskatchewan. It also has a pretty robust cultural scene. So you do get kind of a historic downtown, lots of arts and culture and history going on in Fort Saskatchewan, a lot of events as well. So if that's something that you're into, this is definitely a great option to look into. It is just a little bit farther away from Edmonton, where you're sitting in about 45 minutes typically to get to anywhere in the city. And so that is something to consider if you're going to be traveling into the city frequently. That is going to feel like a longer commute. But again, if you like to get away from the city and like that smaller town feel or smaller city feel anyways, then Fort Saskatchewan is a great option. Now let's come back to the city of Edmonton just so we can see some of the major roads in and out. So we do have the Highway 2 here. Again, that's going to head south. We have the Highway 16. This is the Yellowhead Trail. Now you can see that it cuts across east to west on the northern side of the city. That's going to be a very popular road for people who have to get northeast to northwest or vice versa or really just get from one side of the city to the other. Now this is going to go across to Saskatchewan and then meet up with the Trans-Canada Highway somewhere around Winnipeg. And then out to the west end, this is going to take you out to Jasper. So if you're heading to Jasper for the weekend or you just want to get out to the mountains for any amount of time, this is going to take you there. It takes about four hours to get to Jasper from the city of Edmonton. Now, some of these other ones aren't as important because not a lot of people are heading north. If you are taking the road up to Fort Mac, if you're working out in the oil fields up there, this is going to be the one that you take out here. And that's most of the roads that are going into and out of Edmonton. Now, two more important roads that you're going to have to look at are going to be the White Mud Drive. Now that's this one, kind of mirrors Yellowhead Trail, and then it's going east to west, this time on the southern side of the city. So this is going to be one of your main options to get from one side of the city to the other. And then again, the big one is going to be the Anthony Henday Drive right here. The 216, nobody's going to call it the 216. They won't know what you're talking about. This is the Anthony Henday. This is how you're going to get really from one side of the city, northwest, east-west, or north, south, east, west. This is going to be a very easy access to get to most places of the city. Unless you're heading into the downtown or the center of Edmonton, this largely is going to be a faster way to get across the city. Now let's zoom into the city here so we can talk about some of the different neighborhoods. Now you'll see right off the bat that there are some neighborhoods that are actually sitting outside of the Anthony Henday, largely here 
on the west end and then down here on the south end as well. These are within Edmonton city limits. The Anthony Hende does not outline the city by any means. There is a lot of development coming on on the outside. And even up here, we have some development as well. You don't see that as much. Those are some great new communities to look into. So let's head in and we're going to start on the south and then work our way up. So as we zoom in down here, now I'm going to split this into kind of three different sections because they are very distinct, very different from each other. The first one is a very popular community in Edmonton or group of communities anyways. Now, this is going to be the communities at Windermere. Now, most people, when you talk about Windermere, they're going to think about this upper northwest section here. This is the community of Windermere. They've kind of named this one Windermere, but then named these communities as a whole of the communities at Windermere. So if you hear Windermere, this is what most people are going to be talking about. But it also includes Keswick down here, Glen Riding Ravine, Glen Riding Heights. And then Ambleside up here as well. Now you can see this in yellow. This is a very developed shopping area that's going to have everything from movie theaters to restaurants. Some of the new restaurants actually that come out to Alberta. This is one of the places that they look at first. Just recently got a P.F. Chang's, had a California pizza kitchen. So this is a very common place for those restaurants to come right away. It's a very really built out amenity center. Now the one complaint that I will have about Windermere is that they do have a lot of that, again, retail amenities here in the community. They are lacking on maybe some of those other quality of life amenities as well. We don't have a hospital very close to Windermere at all. You are going to have lots of doctor's offices and that kind of stuff. But in terms of a hospital, it's pretty far to get to one from here in Windermere. You're also not going to have some of the same school selection that you're going to have in those older and more established communities in Edmonton. For uh, I don't believe there's a high school in Windermere. You do have to come up here to Lillian Osborne, which is going to be in Ledger up here. But this is going to be a great option for a lot of people because they've developed a lot of new homes here recently. This is a newer community, I'd say somewhere in the 2010s. And they've built out everything from condos to fourplexes, duplexes, townhomes, and single family homes. So this is going to serve everybody really from the apartments all the way up to the multi-million dollar luxury homes, which are largely up here by the river. You're also going to have two golf courses on the edge of Windermere here. There's going to be one public course and then one private members only course. So a lot of amenities, again, you're kind of just lacking on maybe some of those everyday public service amenities, but in terms of shopping restaurants, you're going to have really everything that you need. The second area that I wanted to talk about down here on the South outside of the Anthony Hende anyways, is going to be the Chappelle area over here. Now this is a very newly developed area. Uh, Chappelle, especially down here when you get to the southern end, they're still actively developing a lot of homes and amenities in here. The same complaint I have with Windermere is they don't have, again, some of those amenities that you might need in terms of a hospital and maybe fewer schools than you're looking for. They're still building that stuff out. These are newer areas. They will get to it. But this is something that you definitely want to look at. Another complaint that I've heard people have about Chappelle is just how tight they're packing the homes. The lots are quite small. They're fitting a lot of homes into these areas. So it does feel like you don't have a lot of a side yard. The space between your neighbor is not a ton, but it is a great option for families because you can get into very new homes. If not brand new, then maybe just a couple of years old and they are rather affordable down here in Chappelle. So that is a great option for families. There are lots of families living out here in the Chappelle area. This consists of Chappelle, which is down here. And then you're going to have Paisley here to the east. Now, Jaeger Ridge is another community that I've included in here, but this again is kind of more of that luxury area. This is very treat off. And so if you're looking for a more expensive home, this is a great option to have as well. There's a golf course just right here too. And then we do have a lot of shopping and amenities in the center there. Now let's move over. Now I'm going to lump these two together and you might think right off the bat, obviously the QE2 is right there in the middle. So these look like they're not one section of communities they aren't really but you're going to have a main through road here that's going to be ellerslie road very popular road down here that has tons of shopping and restaurants lots of stuff going on along here and this crosses the qe2 and that's something that you don't even really notice that you're going over that major road and so these do feel a little bit closer than they might seem when you're looking at the map here now these are older homes than in Chappelle and windermere these are going to have a lot of homes kind of in the mid 2000s is where a lot of this is going to be. As a result, you're going to have bigger lot sizes than you have in Windermere and Chappelle. You're going to have a little bit more built out amenities, although there is some areas like the orchards down here where you're going to have some newer homes, newer amenities, and that stuff still being built out. 
But these are great options for people who are looking for affordable homes that don't mind being a little bit away from the downtown core and still being able to get a nice backyard or a nice place to live that doesn't have too much maintenance that comes with maybe having an older home. Now, one community in here that I will highlight separately is going to be Summerside. Now, Summerside is a little bit special and very popular here in the city because you see we do have the Summerside Lake right there, that is a lake and beach club that is exclusive to people who live in Summerside. So if you are purchasing a home in Summerside or renting there, you will get access to this nice little gated beach area where you can go on some canoes, you can go fishing, you can play on the beach and enjoy all that that has to offer, even ice skating in the winter. So that is a cool little neighborhood that is here on the south side of Edmonton. Now, as we move up a little bit, we're going to split this section of the south kind of into two because you're going to have, and these ones... There is a lot more variety in this area that I'm sectioning off right here. There's going to be everything from Twilliger to Riverbend in the southwest over here. You have Blue Quill and Greenfield. You're going to have Twin Brooks down here, kind of straddled by these two ravines. This is the White Mud Creek Ravine. And so you're going to have lots of, again, luxury options that go along the ravine here. And then in Twin Brooks, you're kind of surrounded by two different ravines here. So that's a really nice neighborhood to get into as well. Now, these are going to be a, a really big mixed bag. You're going to have lots of apartments, townhomes, and duplexes in these areas, as well as some older single-family homes. These are going to be on much larger lot size than you're going to have even south of the Anthony Henday. So this is a great option if you want to get into one of those homes with more, more size, more square footage, but again, not as old as some of the stuff that we're going to see closer to downtown, where you're going to have to worry about a lot of maintenance in terms of furnaces, roofs, structural damage, all that kind of stuff. This is a great option for people as well. This is going to have a little bit more amenity-wise in terms of uh, some of the school options here are some of the most highly rated in the city. We're going to have Harry Ainley High School in here. We're going to have Lillian Osborne High School in here as well. And so you do have a lot of schooling here in this little community here. You're going to have great public schools in this area. You're going to have lots of shopping just right here off of Gateway Boulevard. You're going to have South Edmonton Common, which is another one of those shopping complexes where you're going to have movie theater and really everything you could ever ask for. So that's right there. Now, as we come to the east, one of these sections that we're going to talk about here is going to be everything that encompasses up to here and then kind of splits up this way. Now, this is going to be Mill Woods. Now, Mill Woods is a lot better than you might think if you're going and reading the public forums about it, because Mill Woods has kind of gotten a negative stigma from some people over the years especially the snobby ones over here on the southwest side of Edmonton. I'm kidding, they're not snobby, but basically Mill Woods was seen as maybe a more dangerous place to live several years ago, a couple decades ago. I think that those are overblown. I don't think Mill Woods is as dangerous as anybody has ever made it out to be. And it's also gotten a lot better over the years too. Essentially what we have here in Mill Woods is that they are nicer homes that again, aren't too old. They're going to be a little bit older than we see here on the southwest side of Edmonton. But again, you can get into a nice large home larger than you would be able to get closer to downtown, closer to the university with a larger lot. And that's become very affordable. So this is a good place for people to look if they're a young family or they're looking to get into their first or second home. This is going to be somewhere where you can find something that has a little bit more size, maybe has a bit of upkeep, but still not too much. And you can get into the housing market. It's also got some great amenities. So this yellow right here, we're going to have some shopping complexes. We're going to have a hospital down here as well. They've just opened up here the new LRT line, which is our second LRT line in the city. Let me just zoom out so I can show you what the two of them are going to look like. Let's get rid of those two lines. And so essentially what we used to have was just one LRT line up and down, and that was going to start here on 111th Street. And that's going to come up. It's going to go close to the university, come up downtown, split out a little bit that way, and then up here to Clareview. What they've done is they've added a second line that'll start basically at the Great Nuns Hospital down here in Mill Woods, and that's going to come up. It's going to come up the east side and then currently comes and meets up with the other line downtown. Now, eventually, they are going to extend that all the way out. They've already started construction on this. That's going to come out to West Edmonton Mall. We're going to get to the west side in just a minute. But another great way to go from this southeast side, which was really largely unrepresented in terms of the LRT line, to be able to come all the way up to downtown, very easy access to get downtown, and then even out to West Edmonton. So just increasing the transit options that people have throughout the city, that is a great option to have. Now, as we come back down into Millwoods, again, you're going to have lots in terms of rec centers. There's a couple rec centers here on the south side of the city, the Meadows Recreation Center, you're going to see that. 
just over here is a newer option as well. A lot of these along the east side, the very east side here by the Anthony Hende is new development. We're going to have a new shopping complex up here. This landmark cinema is fantastic with the great reclining leather chairs. And they've just got lots of shopping, amenities, restaurants, all that kind of stuff. One of the things that I do really like about Millwoods as well, really a lot of the rest of the south side of Edmonton is mainly going to be your big box retail stores and your big box uh, restaurants, things that maybe you can get anywhere else. Millwoods, I feel like, has more family business here. It does feel a little more family centric than maybe some of these other areas in terms of not being so commercialized. You're going to have the local pizza shops and all that kind of stuff. So I think that's a great thing about Millwoods as well. Now, the next area that we're going to talk about is going to be the university area. Now, I kind of classify the university areas. Some people might disagree with this, but really all of this here, I would call the university area. You can see out here to the very east of the city, you can see that it's kind of outlined in yellow here. This is largely industrial. I've grown up in the trades. Most of the places where I worked, they had shops out over here in the east. So if you do want to be close to the trade shops that you might be working at, if you're looking to get into the trades here in Edmonton, it's nice to be close to this east side of the city or even out here in Sherwood Park because you are going to have a lot of access to what's going to be really a lot of the trade center of Edmonton there on the east side or especially here on the south end. Now, this is going to be the university area. This is going to be even more of a local business scene or at least more of a boutique business scene than you're going to see on the southwest side or even in Millwoods where we do have a lot of local coffee shops, a lot of local, I mean, everything from butcher shops to board game cafes and everything. It does feel a little bit more like it has some personality to it than maybe the southwest side or the very far south side of Edmonton. Now, right here on the northwest of this side here, we're going to have the university. Now, let's get rid of these lines here. This is going to be the university area. The university itself is right here. And then this is going to be the university hospital. So very important employer here in the city of Edmonton is going to be the public health care system in general, one of the largest employers in Alberta. This is a popular one as well, where we have the University of Alberta Hospital here. And so you're going to see a lot of doctors and nurses and anybody who works in these hospitals trying to live as close to the university hospital as possible. And so what we've seen as a result is that there's a lot of redevelopment going on in these areas, especially as you get closer to the university. And it's starting to branch out further and further where investors are taking these older homes on very wide lots. And these are very old homes. These are approaching on 100 years or more. They're taking these homes and some of them, they're knocking them down and instead building two two-story homes in the same lot. And so you're gonna have a smaller lot space in general, but to be able to get to a newer home in this area, to be close to the university, very mature trees, very mature neighborhood here with a lot of amenities and to be able to have the option of newer homes. So that's something that's popping up more and more here through the university area. And that's going to extend all the way, I mean, from the university up here to Strathern, to Bonnie Doon, Strathcona. And that even comes down all the way into Pleasant View and Allendale. That's something that's very prevalent here through the university area. We have a lot of luxury homes in here as well, close to the university and very close to the River Valley. We have a golf club here. This is Horlack Park, which is a very nice public park, which is unfortunately closed for three years for renovations. We're excited to see what they're doing with that. Again, you're going to have a very varied real estate choices when you're here in the university area, because we do have some of those older homes, which are going to be somewhere in the 400,000s as of the timing of this video, or you're going to have those brand new redeveloped. We call them infill homes here. Those infill homes, which are going to be closer to the 700, 800s and above. <clears throat> and above. Now in Strathcona, this is a very popular place to live as well. We have a lot of apartments and a lot of homes up here. Just south of that and very close to the university is going to be White Ave, which is one of the lifelines here in Edmonton. This is going to be a very popular street where you have everything from restaurants and board game cafes uh, to shopping. It's really a lively street, especially being close here to the university. One of kind of the one of the popular places for people to meet up here in Edmonton. Now, as we come out of the university area, we're going to be heading out to the West End. Now, the West End is kind of split into a couple different sections as well. Now, you're going to have really along here, you're going to see the same thing that we're seeing in the university area. And that's going to be that we have a lot of redevelopment in these areas here. So there's going to be lots of infill homes in these areas. These were older homes, especially as you get close to the river, where maybe they weren't great options. They really were just down to the bones here. And so one of the things that the city has encouraged is for people to increase the density in these areas by knocking down some of these older homes that might not have been safe to live with in the first place 
and building up new infill homes. Now, this is a controversial topic. A lot of people don't like maybe the gentrification that's happening. But one thing that I will mention is that because of all this investment, we are seeing a new investment in the amenities in the area as well. And so you're getting new amenities all the time, uh, for everything from medical centers to pharmacies and shopping restaurants. And so that's a constant re reinvestment and redevelopment that's going on here in the area. Now, as we do zoom in just a bit here, you're going to see West Edmonton Mall. We're kind of famous for one of the largest malls in North America, if not the largest. It was the largest in the world at one point. It's got over 800 stores, over 100 restaurants, everything from an indoor water park to an indoor amusement park, a couple places to go mini golfing, bowling alleys. This has really everything that you need. And so a nice place to be close to. Now, it is already a pretty robust uh, bus transit center. And again, we're going to have that second LRT line that's going to come from downtown and then cut across right in front of West Edmonton Mall here. They're already building the platform that it's going to go up on. And so that's coming down the road. Now, a lot of these are older homes. You're going to have maybe smaller homes on smaller lots here, closer to the river, some of those older ones. As you get out here to Terralosa and La Pearl and Belmead, these might be some larger homes on larger lots as well. And it's going to be, again, more affordable than you are in the university area, more affordable than you might see in some other areas in Edmonton. So this is a great place for younger families to look. Again, first-time home buyers. We do get, again, some industrial, as you see, north of here, up in this area. And that's going to come up all the way to the Yellowhead Trail. Now, outside of the Anthony Henday, we're going to have some options out here as well. The Hamptons, the Grange, Edgemont, which is one of my favorite communities here in Edmonton, it might feel a little secluded from the rest of the city. You're not going to have the same level of amenities out here. And because you're outside of the Anthony Henday, there's almost a mental barrier where you think you're outside of the city, you're further away from some of the stuff. It's not all that much farther than being on the inside of the Anthony Henday, where you're going to have Collingwood and some of these other communities in here, Gary Epi. And so these are some great options, similar to Terralosa, La Pearl, and Belmead. Out here, we're going to have a great variety of homes as well, where you do have the duplexes, you have townhomes, you're going to have some single family homes as well. So good variety, very safe community, lots of walking trails and man-made ponds. You can see a couple of them here on the map. We are going to have a Costco right up here. And then we have the Costco Business Center, which is just being built up here, closest to Costco's I've ever seen to each other. The Business Center's cool. It's got a lot of bulk items that you wouldn't even see in Costco, mainly meant for restaurants, but some people are definitely taking advantage. We're going to have some newer communities in here, just above that Costco to the west of the Anthony Henday with Secord and Rosenthal, Weber Greens. And we also have some newer communities up here. These are called the communities at Bing, Big Lake, uh, Kinglet, and some of these other ones, Trumpeter. Those are some great options if you're looking for a newer home. It's outside of the city. They've really made sure to kind of preserve the nature feel of it. There's lots of trees along the roads as you're driving through these areas. And so that is a cool little way to be outside of the city, close to this nice little lake here, the Lois Hole Centennial Provincial Park, but still be, but still have access and proximity to the rest of the city. Now we're going to come into the downtown core of Edmonton. We do have a lot of apartments downtown in terms of the real estate. Obviously, there's going to be a ton of amenities. It is the downtown the downtown area of the city. Jasper Ave is going to be a very popular street downtown here with lots of amenities. Another thing that the downtown core has going on for it is the Ice District, which is just here east of McCune University, which is a very popular option here in Edmonton. It is kind of that second option below the university and is even better than the University of Alberta in terms of some of the programs that they're offering. So you do have McEwen University here, and the Ice District is a new redevelopment that they put into downtown to make it a more appealing downtown to live in. It's got everything from the new hockey arena that was just built a handful of years ago. They're putting in movie theaters, outdoor skating rinks, lots of investment going in here downtown to make it a more attractive option to live. Now here downtown, you're going to have a variety of options, especially when it comes to the apartments. You're going to have lots of different options to choose from. All the way down to, I've seen apartments in the 70,000s. And then all the way up from there, especially as you get more of a view of the river valley down here. Good loft options downtown as well. Now, one of the more popular communities in all of Edmonton right now is Oliver. So you can see Oliver's just right here. Now they have this little section. This is the brewery district where you have everything from a gym to markets and grocery stores. You're going to have lots of restaurant options as well barbershops and everything you'd ask for is right there. So Oliver's a very trendy neighborhood right now. 
especially for students who are maybe going to the university or want to live close to downtown. Another one of the more popular options in Edmonton, especially for those luxury homes, is going to be Glenora. This is because it has great access to downtown Edmonton while still having access to the River Valley right there and getting out to West Edmonton is very easy as well. There's a lot of redevelopment going on in Glenora. They have quite large lot sizes. They've got very well-rated schools. And this is a popular option for somebody who's looking to spend a little bit more to be able to have that proximity to downtown Edmonton, the River Valley, all the nature that that provides. That is a very popular area right now. You can see that just north of downtown, we're also going to have the Royal Alexandra Hospital. So very convenient to have that just outside of the downtown. This is going to be Commonwealth Stadium where the Edmonton Elks play. So again, a popular area to be close to if you want to go catch a CFL football game. That is something that is definitely packed all the time, even if they don't always have the greatest record. Now, if all of the information you got was from online forums, then you would think that you shouldn't touch the north side of Edmonton with a 30-foot pole. There's a lot of a stigma going around the north side of Edmonton. I will say that it's not that simple. Now, there are some communities on the north side of Edmonton where you are going to see more crime than in some other areas of Edmonton. I've had people come visit some of those areas from Toronto and say that that was just another Tuesday in Toronto, that it's not as bad as a lot of people are making it out to be. I would say largely the east side of downtown is maybe some of that area that they're talking about where you're going to have some higher crime. You are maybe going to have a larger homeless population, but that's going to be something that's pretty easily avoidable if you know what you're talking about. Now, as a rule of thumb, as you're closer to the Yellowhead Trail here, you're going to have some older, more affordable homes. These are homes that you wouldn't be able to get into this price point anywhere else in the city, especially as you're looking kind of around this Alberta Avenue section over here close to the Commonwealth Stadium where you're going to have the football games. And then again, just above the Yellowhead Highway, you're going to have very affordable homes up here all the way out to Belvedere. Now, one thing that you will notice, you do see these gray lines here. There is a freight train that comes here through Edmonton. I've had some clients who looked at homes right close to that, and you do feel it, you do hear it, and that was something that turned them off completely. And so that's something to note that as you get closer to the train, that is going to be somewhere where you can find more affordable real estate. It might be more affordable for a reason because you are going to hear and feel those trains coming through. There is going to be some of these roads that don't have an over or an underpass as well. And so that's something that you could get stuck in traffic for a while. Now, again, as a general rule of thumb, the further you move away from the Yellowhead Highway here, you're going to find newer homes, especially up here kind of in the Lake District, which is going to have a mix of homes that are in the mid-2000s all the way up to brand new. Today, one of the communities up here, Crystalina, is one of my favorite new communities in the city of Edmonton up here on the north side. Even as you get out into Elsinore, this is just west of the Lake District, and you can tell why they named it the Lake District. You see all these lakes here in the area. Very nice, lots of nature to walk through as well here in the Lake District. Elsinore is going to have maybe some older homes that have larger lots and then brand new homes in it as well. We just sold a home to a family out there in Elsinore a month ago or so. And so that's another great option that some people have very much enjoyed. Again, as you get out to closer to the Anthony Henday, you are going to have, in general, newer homes. And then as you come down towards the Yellowhead Highway, you're going to have older homes that are going to be a lot more affordable. Again, some of the most affordable real estate in Edmonton, but they are going to be older and maybe come with some of the maintenance that does come with that. We're going to have lots of amenities. You can see just how many shopping complexes that we do have here on the north end. With Pembina over here, you're going to have Manning Town Center right there, Clareview Town Center over here. So we do have a lot of shopping and amenities. We've got lots of movie theaters up here, lots of restaurants and grocery stores as well. So definitely an option to look into. If you're looking for more bang for your buck, the north side is a great place to get it. You can see that we even have communities over here like Fraser up here on kind of the northeast side, Bannerman, and then all the way down to Beverly Heights where you're going to have homes that do get closer to the river valley even have views of the river valley there's going to be great options for people who want to be able to get out into nature as much as they can and that option is going to be very close by now that's going to wrap up our tour of the city of edmonton let me know down in the comments if i've missed anything or if there's anything you want me to cover in a full video i'd be happy to do that as well now again if you are looking to move to the city of edmonton or you know anybody who is, make sure you go ahead and reach out to me. My information is going to be in the description and in the comments as well. So you can get in touch. We can jump on a call and talk about how we can make your move to Edmonton as smooth as possible. And definitely check out one of these other videos that talks about what it's like to move to the city of Edmonton. So you can get the full in-depth picture of what it's like here in the city. I'll see you guys in the next one.